Hey friends, happy Wednesday and happy midweek to you. I'm so glad that you're joining with us tonight and I hope that you're staying warm wherever you are because today was bitterly cold and it's supposed to be colder tomorrow, I think, but at least the remainder of the week is supposed to be pretty chilly. And with the wind and all that stuff, I hope that you are staying bundled up and staying warm and all cozy wherever it is that you are. And so last week we started a series called Broken and through this we're going through the Bible and we're just talking about just different things about brokenness and broken people and different attributes that brokenness brings to the table. And I know that sometimes as we think about goals and things for our life, there's a lot of times where we look at ourselves and we just seem disappointed. Um, we just seem like we've cut ourselves short or let ourselves down. At some point, we're just coasting through life with no ambition, with no hope, and that can be extremely deadly. And because, uh, I mean, you've heard it said, anything without hope doesn't last very long. And so hope is what keeps us driving forward. But if you're living a life that seems hopeless or you're faking this identity of hopefulness with Christ, it just comes up short every time. And you start to feel lonely and broken and just empty. And so my hope is that through this series, as we go through these things the next few weeks, is that if you are broken, if you are feeling any of this stuff, that you realize, like, for one, that you're not alone, and two, there are so many people who just want to join with you and love and worship and just uh, just be the community that God has created us to be. Now, tonight I want to talk about a guy who wrote a book. His name's Dr. Henry Cloud. You may know him from probably his famous book, Boundaries. And uh, this guy is a great, great author. He's a great psychologist. And he's a great Christian. And so what he does is he just kind of combines his profession with his faith. And he's been putting out a lot of great, great content. But he put a book out called Changes That Heal. And in this book, he gives a lot of great ideas about how you and I can tackle this idea of brokenness or hopelessness. And the things that we can start to do to change our life so that we can be, become better. We can become people of faith people who live life with hope and people who know who Jesus is. And so I want to talk about a parable that Jesus says that he kind of quotes in his book and he kind of walks through this. And I never looked at this parable this way before. And it really kind of opened my eyes to this, this idea of brokenness. And I hope that through this, this may help you as well if you're walking through this too. So it comes from Luke chapter 13. And Jesus is already talking <laughs> about... Um, well, we'll just start with verse one, but we'll get into the parable here in a second. But here's what it says. It says, now there were some present at the time who were told about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered, do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all perish. Or those 18 who died in the tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will perish. So he's introducing this idea of repentance and talking about life. And usually it's through sin that we find brokenness. Whether it's sin of our own, whether it's sin that was committed against us, whether it's no fault of our own, it's just a choice that someone else made. For instance, a drunk driver on the road who crashes into a car and kills a family of five. You know, it was nobody in that family who who created the suffering. It was somebody else's choice who decided to get behind the wheel intoxicated. And it's things like that that bring about this, this idea of brokenness. But then Jesus goes into this parable, and this is really what I want to dissect today. It goes like this, starting with verse 6. Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard. And he went to look for fruit on it, but he did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found any. So cut it down. Why should it use up this soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it, and I'll fertilize it. And then if it bears fruit next year, fine. And if not, cut it down. This one really tackles this idea of brokenness, and it does so very cleverly that, that we, we sometimes miss it. And so what he's talking about is this man, he had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, right? And, and if any of you and I, like if we go out and plant a fruit tree, we're going to one day expect that tree to bear its fruit. I mean, that's just the natural laws of life, right? If, if you have an apple tree in the backyard, 
When you go out there come fall, when it's, gr when it's grown big enough to be able to produce the fruit that it's supposed to, you're gonna expect to find apples. Now imagine you walk outside and this tree is 10, 15 years old and you walk outside and it's no longer bearing any apples. I mean, that's the attitude that this is that Jesus is talking about in this parable. He's saying this man planted a fig tree. This fig tree grew up and is no longer bearing fruit. And so for three years, I mean, you can hear the frustration in the owner of the vineyard. For three years, he's been coming to look at this tree to find the figs in which it's supposed to produce. And it's just coming up short. And it's not doing anything. And so you and I in this parable are represented by the vineyard owner. Right? We are the vineyard owner. And there's sometimes where we start to look at ourselves, we look in the mirror, and we just become disgusted about who we are. And we start to do some soul searching. We start saying, man, how in the world did I get here? Like, this isn't me. We don't even recognize it because the fruits of what we're hoping for aren't showing present in our current life. And this is our New Year's resolutions every year, right? And we just, we hope that we're going to start bearing that fruit. We just keep saying, well, we'll give it one more try. We'll give it one more try. We'll give it one more try. And guess what? It just doesn't seem to happen. So let me ask you, who are you putting your hope into? Because this guy, this owner, he was ready to cut it off. He says, listen, we're done. What good is this soil if it's being used by this tree that's not doing what it's producing? And so I think sometimes our expectations get in the way of our growth. We have this expectation, whether high or low, whether to achieve it or or just put it aside. And this expectation allows us to try to, to have hope for what we are striving to obtain in our future. The problem is, is that sometimes we don't get there. And when we don't get there, we get frustrated with ourselves and we just throw in the towel. And we say, what's the hope? What's the use? How, what good is this if I can't get where I'm supposed to? I'll never get there. Have you said that before? I'll never lose the weight. I'll never get a, a better job. I'll never get the promotion. I'm too stupid to keep going. And the world may start labeling you with all these things, but this isn't the case. And so when, you, when you're ready to give up for yourself and you're ready to throw it in and you've made the order to cut this tree down and essentially just tell yourself that it's hopeless, something else happens. And there's an advocate. I don't know if you see that or not, but there's a man who's been working in this vineyard, this advocate for you and I happens to be Jesus. And that's great. And Hebrews make sure that we understand that, that Jesus is our advocate. He is our high priest. He goes before us and he, he paves the way. And so Jesus comes in this parable. This is who he is. He's, he's the man who works the vineyard and he bargains with the owner of the vineyard. He says, listen, I know that you've been coming here for three years now and the tree's not bearing any fruit. Okay. But give me one year. Give me one year to start digging around there. Give me one year to fertilize it and to spread the things that need to help nourish the growth. And then if one year it's not producing any fruit, then let's cut it down. Now who's your hope in? You see the difference? And so what this parable does is it shows us that you and I try so much to change our life rather than going to the person who can change us. The man who is the advocate for you and I, the one who knows us better than we know ourselves, and yet we put our hope in, in us and our abilities and our talents and all the things that we can do rather than just trusting Jesus to help guide us and give us the tools necessary for nourishment. And so what this looks like is there are three elements in this parable that, that Jesus uses in order to help us grow. And I want to talk about that real quickly. The first one is truth. Truth. Well, notice what the, the, the man working in the vineyard does. He starts to dig around the tree, right? And when you dig around the tree, you're going to expose the roots. And so he wants to dig around and he wants the roots to be exposed. This is talking about truth. You and I need to sink our roots into the truth, into a firm foundation that we can grow from. And from there, he starts to sprinkle the fertilizer all over, giving this ground a rich nutrient type of atmosphere so that these roots can take hold and start to blossom inside of you a person who has hope because your foundation has gripped into the person that is Jesus Christ. And so that's truth. So what what is the fertilizer then? Well, the fertilizer is grace. Now, what is grace? Well, grace is something that's given to you freely. You can't earn it. There's nothing that you can do to obtain it. No matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you cry, beg, plead, you just can't do it. You do not have the ability to give 
grace in the context of what we're talking about. But Jesus does. And so he offers this grace and, he, and through the grace gives the nutrients to the soil that you and I can have the tools that we need that are necessary for us to thrive, right? Not only to just accomplish the task, but to thrive through it. And so when we start to build our roots into the truth and into the grace, God is giving us the tools that are necessary for growth. It's like a baby, right? When you've had a kid and the baby's a newborn and they just start to grow, what do they need? Well, they need milk. They need milk. And so you give them milk and they'll cry and they'll scream and they'll whine. And, and, and then you pick them up and you care for them for a little bit and you give them the milk that they need and then they'll stop crying for a little bit. And that need's going to keep coming and that need's going to keep coming and you keep feeding it and feeding it and you keep nurturing it to a point where it grows up to where it can start to do this on its own. That's what this vineyard worker is doing with us. That's what Jesus as an advocate is doing. But if you leave a baby alone while it's crying because it's hungry, it will not be able to feed itself. And so what that's saying is that if you and I are just left alone, we are the tree. A tree cannot feed itself, right? If your car is driving down the road and it runs out of gas, you can't just tell the car to go fill up the gas tank. It needs an advocate. It needs someone to step into their world to go fill up the tank. And so you and I, we beat ourselves up so much over the expectations that we've set for ourselves. And when we fall short, we beat ourselves up for it. And we, we, we ridicule ourselves and we, we deprive ourselves of the things that help us grow because we feel like we're just not worthy to have it. And Jesus says, if you just have truth and some grace, that'll give you the tools needed. But there's a third element. There's time. Not everything is going to happen overnight. Notice he says, give me a year. Give me a year to dig around the tree, to put fertilizer all around it. Give me one year. And if in one year it's still not producing any figs, any fruit, then we can cut it out. Let me ask you, have you put yourself in an environment that's going to help you be successful with the goals that you've set for yourself? Are you putting yourself in an environment where God can richly produce a nutrient soil for you to build your foundation upon so that the fruits of your labor, which are your actions, that's the fruit. It's, are, is your life producing what you expect it to? And if it's not, then you're, you're not bearing any good fruit. But if you're setting your goals and you're trusting in the Lord, he's going to build you into the person that you are. He's going to build you into the person that his will is for your life. And so let's start putting our hope in him. And so, friends, again, I hope that this series of brokenness is, is really radiating with you. It's really touching in a way that you can you can grow because um, I know it's helpful for me. And the times where we're the most broken are the least times we ever want to talk about it. But just know that we are here for you. We're just a message away. We're a phone call away. And we are to share life together, the good and the bad. So if you're broken, come join me as I'm a broken man too. And let's be broken together. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next time.